want to see if HK wants to play it again. I think it was obviously a great pick for Freeze, but also in this situation, there was very little who could actually kill him. Because it was a Mao card that had been locked in already. You're like, oh, yeah, I don't care. There's no damage. Absolutely, and something to consider. Fnatic, of course, using their first two bans on the Trundle and the Victor. Interested to see if they will use that final ban on Freeze. I don't know if they can afford to, though. There's still so many power picks left up and available. And we know they want to aim towards the top lane tank. Meaning a lot of these picks like Fizz and Aurelia are open. I actually want to see Gamsu take the Fizz as an example. You build him tank anyway, and he does have outplay potential, but... Having a backline threat to maybe limit the potential of a Draven if they're not going to ban it out here. So no Draven ban yet. Yeah, a couple seconds left. All right, keeping it open one more time. Bronze. Basically saying, you know, we discussed it between games, what went wrong, how to deal with it. In case it gets locked in a second time, we now have a better understanding of how to play against it, and we will not draft the same kind of composition that could get punished that easily. No surprise. This time around, they are going to get their hands on the Gragas on the side of the Fnatic. Vladimir, of course, sort of the mandatory final ban, simply too powerful to be let through. H2K, a lot of open picks. We did have one of the situations where I feel like a pick like Vladimir could have been left open because there's so much value on the Gragas for both teams and at least take the trade. Uh, because right now for H2K, yes, there are a lot of good picks, but there's very few clear standout picks because Nidalee is banned, Ryze is banned, and Vladimir is banned. Those are the three most contested picks in the EU LCS right now. So for HK, like you can go for Caitlyn and get a strong AD carry matchup right there. There's no Kalista ban as an example. So you can take like early Caitlyn. Uh, we've seen early Rek'Sai picks quite a bit for, for jungle uh, coming in as well. Seems like Ooh. H2K is saying we have nothing we need to like. There's no like ST pick for us right now. So we just pick towards our composition. Yeah, looks relatively strong so far. Not committing to anything quite yet. A little bit of pick potential, a little bit of split push, maybe some team fight, depending on how they want to go with this. Nar, Elise, interesting. Of course, Vladimir, we talked about it, potentially could be traded back, but H2K have, it's been banned in every one right. of H2K's games. It looks like it's not a pick that they're comfortable playing around. And the reason we have Elise instead of Rek'Sai is because you're running the physical damage deal at top, so you always want to mix up your damage properly. Had it been an AP top, you could have gone for Rek'Sai instead to get their physical damage from there. But we know Elise is a great pick for Yangus, and Udamna has played Nar before the split. Um, it is a pick. Once you get a few levels under your build and into your W, it becomes very, very strong against tanks, but it's very weak against some of these champs like Aurelia and Olaf that can all in. But we have not seen Gamsu play those. Even when they actually had the chance to then swap Gragas to jungle and then have a pick like Aurelia, Olaf, Fizz even coming in top lane, they decide to stick to the tank, which is actually what now wanted. So I feel like H2K is kind of benefiting from the fact that there's such a high chance Gamsu is just playing a tank anyway. And that's why Nar makes sense as an early pick. Absolutely, and now the second rotation comes in from Fnatic once again. Going to see the Cossacks coming out alongside the Nami. This is the second game in a row that their second rotation has been these two champions. We've seen different teams put more support or more priority on the support pick. Fnatic just sticking with something comfortable, leaving open yeah. the AD carry as well as the mid laner here. And I think HK should just draft the same. Or yeah, they, actually they, I like this. I didn't draft the same and just draft like for team fights. Yeah. Again, draft a group of champions who just want to sit together when the fight starts. Nar can even sit and poke and kite back a little bit and then stack up his rage bar and just say like, we don't care about this Kha'Zix pick. Like unless Kha'Zix will snowball early on, team fighting wise, he can't challenge the Draven like at all. You can't do, really do anything against him because you won't get the isolation damage because Kama's always right next to him. Absolutely, of course, the mobility added from those shields will make it easier for him to weave in and out of the fight and juggle those axes. Reckless, though, getting some comfort picks here. Yeah, and are we going to get Lissandra here now for Febby and just all in on this dive, the backline thing. Even Callista ulti is there, and AD carry is kind of self-peeling as well. And then, like, Kha'Zix, Gragas, all diving for the Draven. Or will Fnatic go for, like, the safer choice, like Azir and take, you know, we have now a bit of range as well under our belt which is the choice they go for. And it's not just, oh, it's all dive the Draven. And if we don't manage to kill him, we lose the fight. Now, actually, there is a bit of backline threat from Fnatic as well, long range from, from Febivan. Yeah. 
A lot of sustained damage on the Fnatic lineup between the Kalista and the Azir. Nami and Gragas, both good disengage options, but once again, the Kha'Zix, the snowball he pick, does put some decent pressure on Fnatic to come out on top in the early game. Of course, <laughs> the Draven on the opposite side makes the pressure even more intense. Cannot afford to give up any early kills. And uh, in the past, then Rio has loved to play LeBlanc into Azir. But again, HGS has this conversation that really want to sit and team fight together and just like single out one target here and, and protect the Draven every time. Zillion is something we have seen from G2. I don't think it's the greatest matchup into Azir though, so it makes sense. And oh. we get an assassin from uh, from HGK and their composition suddenly now offers a lot more split pushing. Like Gnar sitting in split pushing, uh, sp split pushing against the Gragas with the W max. Uh, you have the Fizz obviously going to the other side lane, and no one can really follow the Fizz. So H2K with both good scaling, but also very, very strong map control. Fnatic is the team now going all in for the team fights, and this time it's not diving the backline, it's actually kiting back instead uh, from Fnatic. Yeah, throwing down that damage, waiting for those low health bars, then maybe giving Kha'Zix those resets if they get the opportunity. But H2K not too terrible in team fights either. Oh, it's definitely not. A much better assassin for the team fights. Uh, often that yes. the LeBlanc or the Zed does have that CC in his ultimate. It's why Fizz has always been such a tricky pick. While he does struggle early game quite a lot, especially in the mid lane, uh, once he starts scaling up towards late game, he becomes one of the best split pushers who can run teleport. But he's also a very strong team fighter because of his E, like the trickster, the fact he can dodge around and he will build hourglass. He's very hard to deal with basically in all stages of the game but you can shut him down early. Like, that's where you normally want to pull him down, keep him down. If you start scaling, this becomes a problem. Absolutely, of course. Thank you all for joining us. Tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag FNC win, or hashtag H2K win, depending on who you think can come out on top. Fnatic looking to tie this up 1-1, and H2K would be happy to have the 2-0 over a very strong opponent. Now geared up, game two underway. Fnatic need to find a win here to balance these standings out. And H2K want to prove that they're stronger than their first week would indicate. Both teams leaving the base. Base. The base? The base. Pressure on, my for myself, for H2K. Well, we do get to see uh, a matchup in the mid lane that Faker enjoyed playing at MSI, the Fizz into the Azir. Uh, and funny enough, it was also with Elise Jungle most of the time. And the reason Elise Jungle works so well in this setup here is because when you play Fizz in lane, you need river control. Like if you have no, if you don't have river control, you can never all in and then you're useless in lane. Like you need to be able to all in as a Fizz. So you need a jungler who can fight early on, who can set up early vision, pink wards, a few green wards here and there, and be able to challenge if the enemy jungler shows up. And that's where Elise offers a lot of early game pressure. And of course, additionally, in spider form, has additional units surrounding sure. her and really no opportunities for the Kha'Zix to out-duel there. So it's a very smart pick, and it fits with what HK were building for the early game. Ryu needs to get his level 6, so he needs to get first back as well. He will lose before that. And I also like the exhaust choice here from Febivan. But Fnatic is running these 1-4 compositions. And even the, the number one in your comp, which is the split pushing tank, is not really going to do anything. So it's technically just this pure team fight comp on the side of Fnatic. They're not able to win this game if we start playing on multiple lanes. Because then the Fizz and the Gnar will be much, much stronger. The lag of wave clear from H2K though is where Fnatic can punish them if they get to group on these towers. Have to look if they exploit that option. Maybe Rift Herald. More of a contestable objective for Fnatic this time around because they cannot Only afford to deny, to give it up. yeah, exactly. Yeah, they can't afford to give it up to H2K. But it's very hard for them to challenge it as well because they're not going to have much pressure by the time you take it. Like at 15 minute mark is where Nar becomes really good because again, it's about stacking W. It's 14% extra damage with like from your maximum HP. This Nar will deal. And, and look at just at level one the boomerang blade called Harass coming out. More than happy to have that, but Hyper not even available yet, and he's already ripping through the health bar on the side of Gamsu. Freeze aggressive here in the bot lane. Happy to have these 2v2s just to try to extend this laning phase, but we really have to keep our eyes on the jungler as well. 
Yeah, and also Kalista has been nerfed so many times when it comes to early game. She's no longer that scary for Draven to deal with. 1v1 Karma is a fantastic laning support as well as a protecting Draven. So not a bad thing for H2K to get the 2v2, but very good for H2K to get the 1v1. Absolutely. Ryu getting aggressive on the back of that level 3. Something similar to what we saw in game 1. Now Yanko's here as well. And you're going to see this more and more. Yangus will hover around mid and top lane, mainly two lanes. He can really snowball. And when you have these 1-3-1 one, one comps, you want to keep your soul lane up ahead. Spirit fighting Yankos. It's actually a lot of damage laid down. Spider links. Yeah, Yankos, no ability to charge up that passive, so he's going to take the full isolated damage. Continued aggression here on the bottom side. Yellowstar just happy to heal himself in these trades. And Yankos is mainly staying around mid just to protect Ryu and make sure Ryu can actually push out the wave, because otherwise Febren could have frozen it just in front of his tower, which would have made it very difficult for Ryu to do anything. But it's all about like getting a few backs as a Fizz, get your level 6, and then you suddenly have all-in potential if your jungler is nearby. And as we talked about, if you have that vision in the jungle, so you know, so vision in the river, so you know if you're getting ganked or not. And it makes it very scary for Febren as well. If you can't see what's happening, right next to his lane, and if Fizz goes all in, you instantly think, okay, jungler's here, and you just start backing away, even though the Elise might not be there. So let's keep track of the wards early on. I know we all love them. Super hyped for them. Always exciting, you can see Yankos ready to go into that jungle if he needs to, already a ward on that red buff, keeping control with the Scuttle Crab on the dragon area. Bot lane just trading back and forth here in terms of farm. Blows traded between 80 carries as well, but Nothing too substantial gained quite yet. Spander just continues to throw out the harass. Same side use. Freeze getting aggressive, but Nami pretty easily able to heal that one up. Fnatic still losing out in the trades overall, however. Yeah, you're kind of trading against Fnatic here to force Yellow Stars to run out of mana. Uh, Nami W will cost a lot of mana, especially when you start stacking it or maxing it. Um, so whenever you have these trades and you force Yellow Star to use it, well, slowly but surely, he will run out of mana, and then he won't have any chance of making an aggressive play. Once again, Ryu, level 5 here. I was about to say level 6, but almost. And every time he's going aggressive, Yankus, Yankus is here. It's Again, it's literally like watching SKT with Faker playing this uh, Fizz at MSI, where Blank was just sitting mid lane entire early game long. Not even looking to kill, just making sure Ryu can always farm and force Febren to back away. And this is looking pretty rough for Fnatic already. Fizz getting that comfortable landing phase, never a great start. And while the bottom lane is even, Odo may be losing out a little bit in health trades, but there's no mana on that Gragas. No stacks in the Corrupting Potion, and 46 to 28. What is a horrible force. matchup for Gragas. Like, the problem for, him, for Gragas is, like, you, you punish Gnar the first few levels where he's extremely weak. But once he gets a few levels, as we talked about, <laughs> He's jumping in, but once you get a few levels as an R, you become very strong with his range trading constantly. And their percent damage from your W against a tank is perfect as well. And you now have two choices as an R. Either you go Black Cleaver to make your laning phase even stronger, or you just go straight tank. Because you're like, okay, I don't even need a damage item to win this lane, so I can just build full tank and be even better for the first team fight. In this case, though, it's a very safe laning phase for Old Omna, so he's going for Black Cleaver. Definitely already having the phase is going to make it that much easier to run in and out in those trades. Spirit running to safety there. Can't afford to get snared up. Still ahead in XP similar to last game, but not nearly as much of an advantage. And H2K already getting aggressive to push into the jungle. Kree's moving into the dragon area. And it's just too easy for H2K to play these lanes because Kha'Zix doesn't offer any threat against him in, in the early game. So when you have an Elise, you know you have a stronger jungle matchup. You control basically every lane. You see part lane were winning from the side of H2K. That's why they can go for this early dragon as well. Top lane obviously winning with the Gnar. And the fact that Fizz is not losing early game, well, that's basically a win more for H2K. And it's all about Yankos staying around the lane. So really smart early game from H2K, understanding which lanes they need to focus. But also a Fnatic team with their composition, once again, can't really be aggressive. Really going to come down to that mid and late game decision making. And despite losing lanes, just cannot afford to give up too much on the map. Of course, gold is in their favor at this stage of the game. But a decent differential on the top side. Balanced out by Thubby's advantage in the mid. I think so. 
Still relatively slow overall, H2K. Happy to have that dragon to back them up. If they ever do get a lead, it makes things that much easier. But now Spirit with the level six, you can see evolving the claws. Yeah, if you want to play it at home, you just max Q, evolve Q. Fighting the bottom lane though. Here comes Yanko, swap form, looking for the cocoon. Goes in, no, not gonna land if Fates Call comes out. Great. Ooh, Yellow Star comes in late, but first blood to Draven again. That's gonna be devastating because at least 200 stacks get popped out for freeze. Yeah, Reckless and Yellow Star finally got to push out the lane, and then who shows up? It's Yankos, obviously coming in with the early gank. One more time, he has the better matchup in the early game. He can be aggressive towards the lanes. Great first one from H2K, perfect for them to get it on freeze, cashing in once again. Early black, not black cleaver, but early ghost blade for him. And we're gonna have the same kind of game where this Draven instantly is just a massive threat. They're right behind Febby right now. Febby hops over the wall cocoon. Once again, not gonna find purchase there as Febby's just going to be able to walk away from that gank. So you're not taking too much damage though. Negatron's low, keeping him nice and healthy in these trades. And I wanna talk about this. We, we talk about this every time we bring up H2K, but seriously, Gankos, every time he is involved in the first kill, H2K take control of the game. That's exactly what happened. They won last game. They may be able to win again here. Fnatic really need to make sure that they can shift the momentum back in their favor. Yeah, definitely agree on that one. Yankos is the driving force for the early game of H2K. But in this game, because they have some good lane matchups, and with the control around mid due to the Elise, as we talked about, the Fist didn't fall far enough behind for Fnatic to say we're happy with the early game. No, H2K can be very happy with what happened so far. And I just want to see how Fnatic wants to play out this mid game because again, their composition is very, very good if they can team fight. But they don't want to go full late game against the Fizz and the Draven. That's very scary for them. It becomes one of these games where no one is like a guaranteed winner in the late game. Yeah. And so many things can still go wrong. Like Azir gets caught up once and instantly like the fight is over. The big thing about this composition coming in from Fnatic's, it just seems so difficult to execute on. Yes, Playing exactly. around this Kha'Zix. I think it's so hard with, with the jungle pick to execute the composition. I also think the Kalista, while it is a great pick for Reckless, in a game like this, he's not going to be able to match the damage of Freeze. So instead, you rely on the utility she brings. One of the things they're doing now, swapping it to the top side, but I'm going to got to clear out the wave, so he gets to delay this push, and no one is doing it on bottom side. Right now, so both teams are just going to trade, and now it's about who's the quickest. You can then maybe force something on the next tower, or swap and swap the lanes around instantly, because H2K now, already on, on the tower with Freeze. Fnatic doing the same on top, they're gonna be even with this, but there's a chance you can always push for a second tower. Odamna does a range wave clear on the top side, no one on the bottom side right now from Fnatic. And yeah, you can see that war getting dropped for H2K as well, so they are ramping up for this push. It is the even tower trade. But this is where H2K can just push him for next tower. Because Fnatic hasn't sent anyone to stop it. Kha'Zix can't do anything. Obviously, no wave clear from him. And on the top side, as I just said before here, Odamic does a range wave clear. Yanko should not be here, though. Oh, not where you want to be. Emperor's Divide. Here comes Kha'Zix. Taste the fear. That's going to be the pickup back for Fnatic. Yanko's had one job. Just stay bot lane and push into that tower with your team. I don't know why he walks in there. Because he didn't see Kha'Zix for at least 20 seconds. So he didn't know if he was on bot side or top side. And Fabry just walks straight down from mid. Ryu, trying a bit of an all-in just to try and force Fnatic away from tower. Does work for him, but there was a lot of damage lost on the bot tower from H2K because Yankos just valued getting an extra camp in the jungle. Yeah, and you can see already behind in the CS in terms of the jungler, maybe trying to recoup that loss, but over-aggression costs so much against this Kha'Zix pick. Bebby already has the farm lead, happy to have the assist as well, and Spirit, you know, picking up that kill exactly where you want to be as a Kha'Zix, and now the things start to shift back into the favor of Fnatic, because once that Kha'Zix gets ahead, so much easier to play this game. If he can find the 1v1, yes, but HK wants to make plays together as a team, that's why they're teleporting bot lane. Here comes the ult moving forward, Odo, he's going to have Meganar soon, trying to slow down, Whirling Death goes in, Reckless going to drop as well, Flash in, Odo wants to keep the train rolling, Yellow trying to disengage, but it's still the double kill for Freeze, Yellow Star had the Flash, slow reaction times, costing so much for Fnatic. And once again, H2K making a play against the bottom lane of Fnatic, first they gank them, then put a ward deep behind them after they push into the tier 2 tower, they place that one ward, 
Odomna saw a chance, TP'd straight in, and something we didn't see from H2K last week. With these kind of TP plays, where you have a deep ward, look at your minimap. Near that tier 2 tower, there's a ward for Odomna to use. Straight on to Reckless and Yellowstone. Nothing Fnatic can do at this point, because Gamso doesn't want to leave top. He wants to pick up that farm. It's been pushed down, and then Odomna just flash holding Yellowstar back. No reaction from him. Two kills. Straight on to the Draven. He's 3-0 with a Ghost Blade. Second Dragon spawning, and Fnatic right now are behind. Absolutely not where you want to be once again. The Kha'Zix wants to snowball. The Draven 2 has the potential, but doesn't necessarily need to. But once again, you've put in the ball in H2K's court because the Ghost Blade Draven, as you said, 6,000 gold at this stage of the game. Nearly 2,000 ahead of every other member on the map, at least 1,500 in the case of some of those solar laners, and that's insane. Turning to lane here, Yankers realizing something is wrong because Fnatic did not start the dragon. So like, okay, I saw you walk by the dragon, but you haven't started. So clearly you can only be in our jungle or you can be trying to set up a gank in mid. And therefore everyone is staying very passive from H2K, but also Yankers staying around the bottom side. Fnatic starting dragon. No TP from Odo Omni. Gamso can join. H2K can give this one up. Seems like it was enough to showing. Fnatic not in a position to fight because Fibbon couldn't move in time, it seems, even though they actually have TP advantage. The Hill start getting aggressive in the mid lane, just trying to bully out Ryu a little bit. As you said, Gamsu clearing out the waves, ready to TP in if he's needed, and Ryu, no fear, approaching the enemy mid laner. But if Fnatic are not able to use that TP from Gamsu, then there's not really any way for him to force a play that puts HK potentially behind. Because Old Amna will continue to just push his top tower in over and over and over. Spirit giving that blue buff over to Febvin in the end. But now H2K have their sights set on the dragon. And the vision here for Fnatic is just very limited. They know it's gotten started because of the single ward. But it's too late now, it seems, because Kha'Zix isn't even there. He's doing wolf. No one is moving from Fnatic. They're just giving it up. It was a TP advantage for Fnatic. But basically, they're so afraid of what H2K and this Draven can do because he's 3-0 already, like, the compare kill list to Draven at this point in terms of overall damage, it's it's not a fair match. Not at all. I, and this is just so oppressive. Callista, of course, repeatedly hit in the early game as well. Really needs those two items to be effective. The Rune Ants, the Blade of the Rune King. Draven, on the other hand, that Yomu's really all the power he needs at this stage of the game. And you can see Freeze just continuing to stack up, ready for another kill, ready for another influx of gold. And every other lane going well for them as well. You can see a 30 farm differential on the top side of the map just about as Odo is continuing to bully out the Gragas. Yeah, really, uh, Fnatic was the team with the composition that wanted to play around objectives with Kalista, with the Cossacks as well, and like start snowballing some of these early objectives here into forcing some team fights later on. But now HK will be able to swap into the 1 3 1 as soon as they feel Ryu is ready. Put him in a side lane and just put Freeze in the mid lane. And you play this split pushing game with double TP where no one can really stop your side lanes. Like, the only thing Fnatic can do is try and fight five on five. But it requires Gamsu to be there and, like, flash engage with this Gragas. And so risky against the Fizz and the Gnar. If you group up the Fizz, or if you group up, the Gnar takes you down. If you split up, the Fizz can pick off anyone. And it seems like H2K have all the tools to win a fight that is anything less than perfect on the side of Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic basically needs deep wards to set up a TP flank from Gamsu to start that fight, like around a mid tower where you just go straight dive onto the Draven. It's only three members from HK that are not able to react in time. But you need that Gragas here because your jungle doesn't offer, offer any engage. Only other choice is really throwing in the Nami, which is never what you want to do technically with this Kalista Nami setup. But Fnatic need a reliable way to start a fight while HK split up on the map, otherwise HK can just keep putting pressure on two to three lanes at once. And then in the end, you get these late game fights where Draven is extremely farmed and Fizz is farmed. This is an interesting adjustment. Ryu now moving down to the bottom lane. Gamsu has no MR and this is going to be easy. Oh, flash, nice flash in on the back half of Playful Trickster. Quick pickup from H2K. Fnatic though, maybe looking to get something back on the top side. 
What I'm not understanding his role in this game is like, we make him place on the bot side to try and get the Draven fed, that's fine. Now our Fizz gets a kill, sure. I'm just gonna stay really far back because right now I'm the only target for Fnatic. And he's not overextending, therefore he's not dying. Picks up the farm he needs. And now the kill for H2K. Two Mountain Drakes as well. And really, Fnatic just bleeding out. Fabi set to drop here. Tries to make it out to safety. Whirling Death, not gonna hit home. Freeze is gonna hate himself for that old thing. Not waiting for the flash reaction. Just firing it straight into the wall. Run sideways, trying right. to get it to come back at the right angle. Trust me, he's gonna hate himself for that one. Noble effort. At the end of the day, though, still a huge tempo advantage. Fizz, we're putting so much pressure on the bottom side, is going to take out that tower. And the gold lead just continues to grow for H2K. Spirit just does not have the tools to defend this tower. I'd love to see H2K just put Fizz on top side now. Secure, an, uh, secure the rift hill. After you take this tower, might see a fight though, because Fnatic's moving in. Oh, He's engaged. Gomsu as well. Spirit, a decent chunk of damage there, but now Gomsu all alone. Flash forward, knock back on three, not gonna find the stun. Tidal wave to disengage, but Ryu's in the back lines, and he is shredding Fnatic. That's gonna be a quick kill pickup. Three as Freeze is on a rampage. Spirit gets one back, but it's too little too late because they're just going to keep getting taken down. Double kill now for Spirit, the double kill for Freeze. They're gonna chase this bug down, backing off in the end, but H2K happy to have the four for three exchange. Very close fight though. A lot of kills back and forth, a perfect fight for Spirit here. Everyone kind of splitting up, chasing multiple targets. He gets a lot of damage down, but so does Freeze. And five kills now on this Draven. We mentioned this so many times, like Fnatic need to basically just like run five man mid and try and force that team fight, but it's very forced. Every single time they do it, and it's also against these double teleports. But that was the one play Fnatic were looking to make it. They wanted to try and win that fight and try and secure an objective from it to claw their way back in the game. But they end up actually losing out. Yeah, just could not find a victory there. H2K now with the 5k gold lead. Very oppressive, and as we look at this fight one more time, you can watch how close this is. Yeah, so basically Fnatic's been pushing topside with AD carry support, meaning they can roam down. Gamso's here as well. But that's where the TP comes in for Moto Amna. And now the setup is kind of weird for Fnatic. They don't really know where to engage, who to jump for, so they go for Moto Amna. Miss him. Obviously not the target they want. But now we get this very split up fight. Everyone is chasing on one side, and then suddenly the rest of HK split up on the other side, and then Kha'Zix does get to like sit around here and get his isolation targets. Get extra damage in, but H2K win out. Four kills for them. A lot of them on to freeze. And we now have two dragons, a third one spawning. Baron up as well, of course, a little bit early for either side to consider it, although much easier for H2K with those double mountain breaks. Finally, in that last fight, we got to see the power of the Kha'Zix on those split up targets, just ripping through the health bar on that Meganar. And you also see Freeze here realizing, okay, the only threat is basically the Gragas with Flash Body Slam. The only way for him to avoid it is by having QSS, so you build it very early. Instant QSS when he gets hit by the Body Slam, and then Flash when the ulti from Gragas is flying in the air. That's the way for him to avoid it. If he can avoid it and not die due to the engage, well, suddenly he will win fight. Two Mountain no. Breaks means very, very early Barons. Fnatic, Fnatic on the bottom side. Not ready at all. Two. Can he make the hero play? He can't. H2K pick up that Baron completely uncontested. Gold lead now, maintaining a 5k. Fnatic just had no early game at all because they had a Kha'Zix jungle and that is Kalista in down the bottom lane as well, losing against the Draven and Karma lane. So you had two lanes right now struggling, top side and bot side. You have a worst jungle matchup, you're only winning mid lane. But well, because you have a worse jungle matchup, you're not winning mid lane hard enough. And that allowed H2K to get these early dragons. Double mountain for them, perfect. Rush down a Baron, full control in this game and also in the last game. Absolutely. I mean, just finding early advantages, turning them into so much more, and Fnatic consistently on the back foot. And while we did see Kha'Zix be such a key pick to their success yesterday, the lack of early pressure from this lineup has really been costing them. Gamsu's reliance on these very vulnerable tanky picks also playing a little against them. Keezy pickup coming in there. Dragon dying in just a matter of seconds, but Fnatic trying to get something back with his death rush. And now if you're playing this uh, split push comp as H2K, every time you don't see Fnatic on the map, expect him to set a trap. 
because you're supposed to have vision on them all the time because you have all the lanes pushing down. So your minion waves will provide extra vision in lanes. You can get deep vision in enemy jungle. So if you don't see them for like 20 seconds, they're like most likely setting up a trap somewhere. Ryu played it very safe. Gamsu uh, dropping low. Gonna have to flash to safety on that one as the tower is now set to drop. Meanwhile, Bander and Freeze in the mid lane, continuing to throw down Harass. Spirit goes deep. Whoops. That's not at all what he wanted. The Nard doing way too much damage there when backed up by the Elise. Tower drops on the top side of the map. Gold lead grows. And now Freeze and Vander are poised to take down the mid lane. Reckless getting aggressive to try to clear out these waves, but everything is going wrong for Fnatic. Nikos goes in. Can they get the kill back? Tidal wave. Elise jumps up in the air, is set to come down. Mininar comes out. Vander here on the backside. They're trying to get a kill on the Reckless, but he is dishing out so much damage. Here comes Ryu, though. Yellow Star over the wall. The fast turnaround. Freeze potentially on the way as well, but he heads back to the middle lane, and Fnatic just get over aggressive. Odana just lost his Mega Nar there when he flashed in, so he didn't get to use ulti. Reckless did manage to stay alive for a bit at least. Fnatic gets a few kills, but so did H2K in the end. Mitouch didn't go down. So small victory again for Fnatic, but under pressure in every single lane. And Spirit is haunting, finding Freeze. Looking for it, stealth in, Yomu's active. Stand aside available, tries to predict the jump. Spirit now has the freedom to leap in. Stealth again, will he go for it? Has the slow. Freeze threatening, he knows he can win the 1v1. I love when you have these battles here where everyone is just waiting for the first guy to use an ability because if Kha'Zix jumps first and Freeze interrupts it, he can win the fight. For Freeze, we're waiting, we stand aside for such a long time, but didn't end up using it, and then Spirit weren't really ready to jump in and commit. So, this is the first kill on him. They get the tower, and now look at a uh, Mega Nar from Odo Amna, how close it is. He wants Run it out. so badly. He and wants it so bad. He's like, I, I got the ulti ready. Rage Pie is dropping down, he's dropping down, and then. No! No! <laughs> Oh, uh, not at all what you want. Fnatic happy to have that work out in their favor, however. Or at least work out an even trade, not in their favor. But now they're going in for one more fight. Disengage comes out for Gragas. Odo chasing down the opposition. But may have been caught out. Spirit doing a lot of damage, but Odo, Meganar on the way. He does still have the ultimate. Ready to leap in. He's just going to back off, though. Doesn't see the setup opportunity. Spirit speeds out of there, and HK just go right back to the mid lane. They're ready to fight every single time. They never really get set up their split push anymore because there's constant fighting going on. HK is so strong. This tower is still low. Two hits from Freeze and it's down. That might be the chance for Fnatic to engage. So in case the Draven overextends, no ulti from Reckless, no ulti from Febriven either. Hailstar has the way for disengage. No cast though. H2K get in. There's no tools for Fnatic to really get them out. Emperor Need divide. The waves. Coming in now, Super. Ulti from Fibrin coming up, just a few seconds. Ulti from Yellowstar as well. Tower they gotta go instantly. Rock. Ryu now moving in, Shard goes down. Debbie taking a lot of damage, Exhaust comes out as well. No commitment yet from Fnatic. Move in, Gamsu looking for the play, but he only is gonna hit Odo back into the team. Not going to be enough, HNK gonna walk away with that tower. Fnatic still chasing forward, however. Just calm, patient play coming in from H2K. Yeah, H2K realizing how many things were on cooldown. Started Fnatic at first. Took down the tower. Didn't get in here, though. Small, small, small things going in favor of Fnatic. Very small things. Like, hey, you didn't get my in here, but you kind of took my tower. So I guess yeah, the, the kind of lost mining. anyway. <laughs> yeah. But it's just been so hard for Fnatic to execute these compositions they've been running against H2K. And when H2K are just picking comps with Good scaling and a lot of threats in the back line from both Ryu and, and Freeze. And it feels like this game, there's a lot of default to comfort inside of Fnatic. You get this nice Callista pick for Reckless, but it just doesn't match up well against the Draven if he ever finds yeah. a lead. Gomsu, once again, comfort picks in the top lane, but leave him vulnerable to those counter picks from Odo. It, it's a little bit too easy against Fnatic and pick the Mantle Field. Oh, oh Ryu. Ryu potentially in trouble. No tool ah. to get out of that one. He even used the tricks if we get faster to the lanes. They couldn't use it over the wall. Good little trap, but that's what we talk about. You know, if you don't see them for like 20 seconds, expect them to have a trap somewhere. That's their way back in the game. But as we just said before here, the fact that Fnatic has so much focus on picking these early tanks for Gamsu, 
does make it easy in the pick and ban phase because you saw Odo Omni say, I'm just gonna pick Gnar. There are counters to it, but you just play tanks. Anyways, I'm not afraid. And he took it in the first rotation, and it ended up being the exact matchup he wanted it to be. Exactly. And now moving forward, of course, the 40 CS advantage on the top side of the map on top of all the additional gold. 7k advantage for H2K still. That pick buying Fnatic a brief break from all the pressure on the map. Not a whole lot going for them still, however. That'd be finally starting to do a decent amount of damage, however. Yes. They are. We're approaching that point in the game where the gold lead is going to matter less and less. I would say in 15, 20 minutes from now, <laughs> yes. I wouldn't say in now at all. I There's still a lot of items to be built and a big change. See Rage, okay, so now Fnatic finally gets a chance to start grouping and sieging on a tower. Getting quite some damage on it. HK not finding a way to engage. It all starts with Ryu getting caught in the bottom side. Gives him the tower, means that HK couldn't set up the 1-3-1. Oh. Three's getting aggressive though. One shot, two shot, not gonna be enough to burn through Spirit, but he's still on the front lines. Comes the ultimate from Reckless. Maybe looking for the re-engage. Gomsu, maybe hoping to get the flank. Infernal Drake, now the focus of H2K's attention. No Meganar in this fight here. If Fnatic wants to go for it, no, they instead going straight for mid tower. Trying to get some gold for giving up another dragon. Four dragons to zero. But Omni needs to respect the fact he's a Mininar at the moment. Fnatic going for more. They have the tower backing them up. The Sun Disk keeping their flank safe for now. But Ryu maybe looking to get aggressive at the end of the day. H2K. Not quite the trade they wanted. Yes, they get the bonus AD and AP, but it cost them two towers and the gold now starting to even in Fnatic's favor. Another tower on top side here. We are going to have to follow in with TP. Same for Odo Amna, though. No wards. Well, there's one ward at the red buff h can use, but a great rotation, honestly, from Fnatic. Realizing it was too risky to fight for the dragon itself, so get two towers instead, try and even out some of the gold. Because that really is everything that matters for Fnatic now. Be ready for that next Baron fight. And when the Elder Drake does spawn later on in the game, be ready for that one. Might even start the Baron, because HK is so far back on the map. They're just sleeping right now. Tidal Wave comes in to make sure Yankos can't get in in time, but TP is on the way. It's only going to be one member, though. Can he do it? Flash back with the all Kha'Zix. Gets the Baron, but Ryu's here as well. Reckless burns down. The rest of H2K ready to back up. Ryu flash to safety. Febby all alone. The axe falls him over the wall. The cash, the roar of the crowd. Freeze, happy to pick up that kill. Fnatic overstep. But honestly, that was still the best possible situation for Fnatic. Like, they got two towers mid, got the Russia Baron with the Kalista as well. But because H2K were still ready to react, had TPs up and are this far ahead, they just instantly commit to the fight and win the fight. In it going down. And we got to see again the power of this Fizz once he gets a few items, both as a team fighter and a split pusher. Because he has Sonyas, because he has this Trickster, it's so difficult to play against him. And a champion like Kalista, relying so heavily on sustained damage, just does not have the opportunity to fight back. Spirit maybe looking for some retribution kills here. The Baron power play in a sorry state. Negative 500 gold <laughs> dropping. Watch this one more time. Fnatic almost get the best out of this situation, but then HK can commit great team fight from Ryu, killing Reckless instantly, and Pivan obviously left in the pit. Last axe will take him down. A bit of bonus goal, 510 for free. Just a bit. Just a bit. <laughs> no, just a little bit. He's almost max items, so for him now, it technically doesn't matter that much. Yeah. Set 15 minutes for free. It's going to be two or three. Odo gets locked up. Good bubble from Yellowstar to stop any forward aggression on the side of H2K. They may not have Baron, but they still look pretty confident to push in. 4K gold backing them up. Four dragons as well. Febby gets locked up. The follow-up is here. Oh, Into the wow. wall. Knocked out. Freeze goes godlike. And H2K aren't done yet. They're moving forward. Reckless flashing to safety. The Shark's going to miss, but with the mid laner down, things get so much harder here on the side of Fnatic. Yeah, Febben really wanted the exhaust in this game to stop some of the all-ins from Ryu, meaning he doesn't have cleanse against some of the CC. It's a small thing for Ryu. He did, did make the correct choice. I think exhaust was the right summoner spell, but it just means he in the late game now. One cocoon onto him, stun from an R, and he goes down. Superman is pushing in. Gamsu locked up, taking some poke. Yellow Star as well. Okay, cutting the waves. There goes the cast. Odo knocked back into the team. Can they burn him down? No, a hop skip makes it out to safety. Gamsu drops. Ryu pushes forward. 
Baron buff creep stopping it, but oh my god, great bubble. Reckless happy to pick up that kill. Good reaction coming in from Yellow Star. Are they going to try to continue the fight here? Freeze getting very aggressive. Oh, almost blown up immediately. Shut down. Odo tries to stop the fight from going. But Spirit, he's hungry for blood. Febby backing him up. The double kill. Hop, skip. Make your way through the team fight. Kha'Zix is on the board. Five, one, and three. Massive mistake from H2K. Freeze not respecting the damage. Spirit can deal here towards the late game once you are singled out. I'm not really sure what Freeze was trying to commit. He just went... Crazy all of a sudden. Fortunate doesn't have those big crit items. It's a lot of flat AD, so isn't two shotting people at this stage of the game and Spirit. It's pretty close though. Yeah, very close. Spirit similarly close, however. Has the Maw, the Yomus, the Warrior Enchantment. Three upgrades as well, Wings, Claws, and the Ultimate. Yeah, HK keep giving Fnatic a chance to come back to this game. Gold gonna be very even after this tower goes down. This was a team who were winning in the mid game with a composition that could play 1-3-1, one, one, had all the dragons, and yet H2K would make some stupid mistakes. Bad engage from Gamso at first, but then you're still fighting around the Nexus turrets. Great uh -oh. bubble coming in here on Ryu. Gets knocked up first and then bubbled right after. And then on the retreat here, you just say, let's go back. Let's not risk anything. We are winning the game still, and Breeze just goes all in for the engage. Oh, and yeah, so aggressive. Exhaust, not enough to stop that one. Spirit, of course, just going to clean up the team fight from here out. Bounce over the wall for style points as well at the end. Clean performance overall from Fnatic to clear out that fight, just really punishing the mistakes from H2K. While Freeze has had a stellar series thus far, he cannot afford to overstep anymore. Very good for Fnatic that the Drake we saw before got killed just a little bit too early for the Elder Drake to be see, next. I think. 15 seconds off. Yes, and exactly. If, if they had waited 15 seconds more to kill this, this would be the Elder Drake. This would be so much extra damage sustained coming in on the side of H2K. The true damage, of course, scaling with the amount of dragons taken as well. But now Fnatic had, I mean, essentially. We'll give up another one, but it buys them a bit more time. Yeah, six uh, minutes. And then you might see H2K make another mistake. However, after making some of these mistakes, as a team, they should be talking about it. But I guess they're moving in. They're coming very late. So obviously, they can't react in time. Gamps just TP. Maybe looking for the flank. They cancel. OK. And yeah, Fnatic was about to take a very risky fight here, being out of position. Instead, it's H2K moving towards And I'm just waiting for this one big fight, where if H2K makes another mistake and Fnatic wins the fight, that's straight to a Baron. And then your five dragons to zero might be nothing. And the fact you've been ahead in this game almost entire game on. Something to consider. Fnatic, of course, play, have to play very carefully. Not only is the game at the point where a single team fight could end it, but also no QSSs, no cleanses, no Mikhail's crucibles. If a cocoon lands on a single member, if true. Gnar gets that ultimate engaged, there's really no option to come back. But if Spirit gets the opportunity to reset and just start bouncing through that back line, would be an easy fight for Fnatic. Ryu setting up the death brush is pinged out. We're just waiting for Baron to spawn. And now it's all about having the river control around it. Fnatic trying to create another pick. Remember our rule. If you haven't seen them for 20 seconds, expect them to sit in a trap in a bush somewhere and have that trap ready. That's why Ryu is not committing to anything, realizing it's a little bit too obvious. You know, no one is showing on top side. This wave is pushing away from me. I'm not going to run in. Will get spotted out by the trinket. Ooh. H2K smell blood in the water. Gamsu no TP. This could be disastrous. Four members moving up. Fnatic playing a ring around the rosy here, trying to make it back to safety. Febby's on the way. Odo's TP. Oh, he cancel as well. Bad teleport from Odo Amna here. Could be the 4v4. It will be the 4v4. Moving forward, going in. Rit. The crew not going to land. H2K backing off, Fnatic opting to back off as well. Baron potentially on the table. Fnatic have positional advantage here. Mini Nar from Odo, that's a 15 second window. Reckless gonna burn through that ward. We'll take a bit of poke back for the Baron. So he's waiting. One engage from either team. We're looking at Gamsu with the flash engage, failed it earlier. On the side of H2K, basically build around Setting up the flank with an R 
with a Fizz. It can be tricky to pull off like a Mega Nar ulti flash as well from, from Odama's side in case they don't get any proper flanking. Odo, decent amount of rage. Just trying to stay right on the edge. Ready to go into Mega Nar at a moment's notice. May have to pop it here. Signaling H2K are ready to back off. Have to be careful to stagger those backs, though. Can't afford to give up a Baron. Now, now we're at the point where these team fights are so, so even. Febron can be the hero. Spirit, if the fight is very messy, split up can be the hero. Both teams definitely have a lot of tools late. But this flat damage, if it is a straight on 5 on 5, you've got to give it to H2K with the Draven and the Fizz. The problem is, it's rarely just a pure 5 on 5. People are fighting on different fronts. Trying to chase against like the Nami and Azir, and then suddenly you take a bit too much damage and you overcommit against Kalista, and she gets too many wind stacks on you. And HK, again, as we said, they don't have like that 100% guaranteed engage where it's like, oh, this is a perfect engage. No, they need Odamna and Ryo to come in from different angles and get that Megana timing perfect. Ryu still on the bottom side, does have the TP if he needs to join up. Maybe hoping to start that split pressure. Gomsu's available as well, however. We'll be able to match on the bottom side of the map. Yanko's getting aggressive. Swap forms, looks for the cocoon just to hop out. Spirit. And everyone is trying to get mid control, because once you push the mid lane, you can then move into river towards the Baron and set up your ward. So teams are always committing to pushing out their mid lane first and force the other team to sit and defend further back on the map. So he's at this point, not able to do enough against Spirit to really threaten him right now. Give him uh, two more seconds and he will. But that little one hit, Spirit was okay against. Still, it's all about getting to some of the parent control. Both teams setting up for TP's already. Now it's HK's turn to step inside, play out a few boards. Are you gonna take the red buff away? Minor advantage here. Not gonna mean too much at this stage of the game. Elder Dragon on the way as well. This is where we could see the map break wide open. Crit's hitting hard for Freeze. Almost 1,100 damage onto that minion. Reckless Yellow Star Spirit, the squishier members of the team, have to play safe. And of course, if you are a fanatic, you're not interested in losing either of the objectives. But if you are H2K, you can actually give up Baron and trade it for Elder Break. You have these five dragons already and use that two minute window to try and close out the game. But the problem with Elder Drake is, again, duration is fairly short. But Baron in three and a half minutes is, is very effective. Fnatic constantly hovering on top side, but they can't really stop Ryu on the bottom lane. Gamsa can buy time, but he will always be pushed down towards his tower. And if he ever leaves, Ryu does not follow, that's a free tower. Now Baron being started by Fnatic. And they're getting aggressive. They have the Callista and the Kha'Zix. They have the control over the area. H2K are on the way in, but the Baron is set to drop. Fnatic get one more. And H2K are going to have to walk away empty-handed. Dragon 13 seconds away. Really slow reaction by H2K. One more time here. Great call by Yellowstar and Fnatic just rushing down Baron with Callista. Elder Drake is here now. Rest of Fnatic running from base. It takes a lot of time to kill the Elder Drake. I don't think H2K can just burst it down in time. Fnatic uh, moving in. This dragon is everything. If H2K can get this, they can probably secure a win. Can they get it? They, they get are going to be able to grab it. Odo, oh, no. Gamsu went too deep. He's going to drop instantly. That is a five stack Elder Dragon. H2K. Fnatic needed just a few more seconds here to be in position to contest it. Instead, they come in a little bit too late. H2K burn it down, get a kill on Gamsu and the Elder Drake. So two minutes of being absolute gods now if you're H2K. Five dragons. Your mountain drakes will work wonders when you get onto one of these towers. 30% bonus damage. Very, I mean, I mean just... You go straight down here and you take that mid in here and then you just have one of the waves from the side coming in. You join with that wave and you take another in here and Fnatic can't really fight you. This is, they without a doubt, <laughs> one of the closest late games we've seen in a very long time. Balance on a knife's edge here. Trap. All it's going to take is one mistake. Whoops. For you. 
Nice Sonya has TP coming in, hops into Yellow Star, can he burn him down? Quick pick up there, TP came in as well, Odo on the way in, suddenly Reckless is overstepped. There's simply too much true damage. H2K get the advantage they need, Febivin suddenly in trouble, running for his life. Freeze on the front line, dishing out the damage, Bebby drops one more time, a final cash out for Freeze. H2K now pushing in, and they are poised to end this game. All it took was a single mistake on the side of Fnatic, and H2K are going to blow open the base. Yeah, Fnatic tried to set up another trap here, but it's only two members, and Ryu didn't even get hit by the knockup from Yellowstar and the Callista ulti. And now H2K able to close it out. Closing it out with confidence, a rough mid game, but pulling through in the final seconds. The Dragons they worked so hard for in the early game paying off, and H2K are going to pick up the 2 0 over Fnatic. And a lot of things were decided in the early game here, I feel, with how much control H2K had with their composition and the lack of early ganking options as a Kha'Zix, as an example, and the losing side lanes from Fnatic. And then, of course, again, burning down that Elder Drake. A little bit faster than Fnatic had hoped H2O! So close, He goes to steal and come out. Ooh. Party popper. Bam. Well, well deserved, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, HK deserved that 2-0. I definitely agree. There were some problems uh, in the mid game here, early late game, over aggression from a few players here and there. But that's what was also we talked about here. Late game, when you have this many dragons, you are OK trading one objective for the other. But the other team is not. Because if Fnatic gets the Elder Drake for Baron, it's like, yeah, we got Eldrake to deny you. It doesn't really benefit us that much. And you now got a Baron plus your five Drakes. We're like, no, that's not really great. And that's why, again, stacking up these Dragons are so, so important and why having these early games where you can't be proactive just hurt you so much. HK even got the second Dragon when they had no teleport. Fnatic was setting up to that Dragon and then instantly just ran away from it because Draymond 3-0, they're like, nope, we're not going to fight this. And that's a free Dragon again for HK. And absolutely, I mean, H2K building themselves such a huge advantage in that early game, capitalizing on it so well. But I we also have to praise Fnatic for bringing it back sure. in the mid game, yeah, doing yeah. well to turn those fights around. But at the end of the day, those stacking dragons finally pay off. And really, H2K just coming up big in this series overall, continuously punishing the draft decisions from Fnatic, even when that Kha'Zix was able to have an impact. They didn't hesitate at all in the coming fights. And we see a lot more aggressiveness uh, when it comes to the plays HK pull out in the early game. And we actually saw TP plays from Oda Omnit towards the bottom side when they knew they had good uh, setups. So I really like that from HK, something we didn't get to see in week one. Much improved team for sure, but I think Fnatic and their draft is not doing them any favors, making it very hard for them to win these games. Uh, funny enough, actually the same thing Rick has said after the loss to Vitality in one of the games. They're like, yeah, you know, we actually didn't feel like our draft had many options. So that's definitely something the team needs to look at uh, because this game, despite HK making these mistakes, they were still so, so far ahead with stacking up dragons and, and the extra goal lead. They managed to close it out. Absolutely. I think very limited overall. But 